Hey. Hello. Hey. <laughs> can you hear hey. me okay? <laughs> I can. What's going on? I just got home. My brother just dropped me off. Woohoo. Welcome uh, back. <laughs> thanks. I know I can't <laughs> believe it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the closing thing at SpaceX with the debrief was really great. And the best part was I, yeah, you know, they gave me my uh, SpaceX wings. They're dragon nice. wings. Congrats. <laughs> I know, I can't believe it. It's been just a crazy six months, my God. Oh, it's yeah, and you're back now. Now it's on to the next phase. Yeah, well, I get, I, the best part is, okay, so I thought that they were going to mail everything back, but yeah. I brought a suitcase and they actually gave me everything. So everything we wow. packed for space that went to space is now here with me in my bag. One of the things that a lot of people didn't realize is that when you're packing for space, you have to pack months in advance because you've got to get that stuff to SpaceX and then they got to figure out where it's going to go in the Dragon capsule for the center of gravity. It's kind of feel like you get that feeling of being pulled back again, that sensation of that thrust, even though I'm not even, I'm just watching it. You know, um, when I got off the plane and my brother picked me up and you know, I'm wheeling this home, I started thinking about everything that's in here and how like treasured it is. <laughs> you know, I had to pack it, so it's not like, you know, SpaceX when I was there. I packed um, a suitcase within a suitcase, so I was able to... <sighs> Where to begin? All right. You know, what was interesting was learning that we didn't have a little bit of space for our own personal things to take to space we had a duffel bag of space. And, and that really just changed everything because now you're like, oh, I can bring some serious stuff. What's the most important things to me? And one of them was absolutely from the beginning, how do I bring my family and friends along on this journey? And how do I be able to bring something special for them, their choosing, to space and, and then be able to bring it back to them and give them this. There's a lot in here. Oh man, and it's kind of heavy. <laughs> oh, wow. So the first thing in here is my SpaceX bag. This is the duffel. This, is, this bag is what they said we could pack. So I filled this and it's funny, they're like, leave a little room. And they had uh, originally these like, um, these um, spacers in here to exact the volume. And I was like, I didn't leave any room. I packed this thing in. One of the things that was really important to me was that I could not only represent myself as an artist, but also bring artists and poets along with me. We got a bunch of poets together here. Actually, this is more of them back here. And they sent me these poems. And this is the one who is the Arizona um, poet who I met downtown once at a bar. He had his typewriter set up. He types on an old fashioned typewriter and you can pay to have him do on the fly a special poem. So I reached out to him. I said, yeah, I will fly your poem. And he typed it up and he did three copies of it. And now I get to give it back to him, sign it and give it back to him, knowing that it flew into space. Having something taken to space is a really special thing. And, and to me, it's very special because one, I am a big space fan. I've been looking up at the stars my entire life, like most people. I was the first person that Cyan was able to tell about getting selected for the competition. And so, you know, I've been on this journey with her since the very beginning and to see it all happen and have a peace of mind fly in space with her and then come back uh, is just really special. So now that I'm back home, I wanted to throw a little party to just get together and hang out, but also return the items that I took to space for them. And so I'm super excited because I think a few of them know that they're getting their items, but not everybody. And then I have a couple of special gifts to give them too that they don't know is happening. So it's gonna be a fun night. Thinking about what you know has impacted me, and of course you all know that Captain Kirk made it to space. 
<laughs> um, and so I made a little Twitter video, I don't know if you saw it, where I said woohoo to, um, to Blue, uh, to Blue Origin and Captain Kirk, and then I said, but I brought the entire crew to space in the form of these Star Trek memorabilia and stamps, um, and just a way to kind of recognize our family and our, my dad and how we always watch Star Trek together. You know, when you're packing for space and they give you a significant amount of space to do it, you start thinking about all the little things that made you who you are. And for me, it was growing up and being a sci-fi lover. Um, my greatest memories are watching Star Trek with my dad. My dad passed away when I was 19. But I just remember it started early with the original Star Trek, even though it had aired before I was born, it was already in reruns and syndication. And I remember as a kid, Halloween, having my Star Trek shirt. The Neil Armstrong autograph. Did you, never, you never held it. No, because this is your first time actually seeing it, because Langley gave it to me that, yeah. My dad so got cool that in 1969. Mm -hmm. I know, that's crazy. The footage. In space. So being able to just bring this and have it from my dad's legacy and float it and now get it back. And no, I mean, I can't believe I brought this to space. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as a kid growing up, um, my dad was very inspiring, very push, pushing her like you can do anything if you set your mind to it. But hey, you're going to have to work for it. That's part of, that's, 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 you know, that's what you have to do. How bad do you want it? You got to go get it. And nothing's guaranteed, just don't give up. Yeah, you know, I was born on Guam, and the reason why is because my dad was working at the NASA tracking station during the Apollo missions. So we were there from 1966 to 1970. So both me and my brother, my older brother Chris, were born on Guam. And I was born eight and a half months after Neil Armstrong took those famous first steps on the moon. So I consider myself to be a moon celebration baby because, you know, the youngest of four. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is that I grew up with looking at Neil Armstrong's autograph to my dad on his office wall, even though he left NASA soon after I was born. He had all of these cool memorabilia like the Neil Armstrong's autograph. And a lot of people don't know, but Neil Armstrong did not give out, give out his autograph often. And after the Apollo 11 moon landing, he went on a tour to all the different tracking stations to thank him. And my dad was one of the people who got to meet him and he gave him his autograph, thanking him for all the help because my dad did some special things. This is the most significant out of everything in here because it is um, an Apollo 8 coin from my dad. It's my Guam coin, the first gift my parents ever gave me. Um, from 1970. It's the Krista McAuliffe silver dollar. It's the Apollo um, 50th anniversary coin. It's the um, Civil Air Patrol coin and the Women Air Service Pilot coin. It's the um, Apollo 8 coin from my dad again. It's the Obama coin. It is the SpaceX coin. And then this was a random coin that I had um, that I got when I was a kid and it's Abe Lincoln and it says the 16th president. And so, you know, Abe, 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 <laughs> gotta bring Abe along. Preparing for launch, they tell us you've got, you know, you get one phone call before you leave Earth and that's done on the pad right before you lift off. And I was thinking, okay, well, I'm not gonna call my mom, my parents, cause my parents had passed away. Um, I'm not married, so I don't have a significant other to call. I'm not dating anyone and, and I don't have any kids. So I was like, and I kind of was sitting there in our group and I was like, oh, I don't have anybody to call. I wish I could call Michelle Obama. And my uh, kid who is our mission director was sitting next to me and he turns and goes, we can do that. I think we can work that. And I was like, we can? <laughs> And it turns out that the person that we have in, uh, in common together, who is the first female Thunderbird pilot ever, she was a White House fellow. 
um, and knows Michelle Obama and her team. And she made it work so that I could call, have a phone call, not just me, but my team with Michelle Obama. It didn't happen from the pad, it happened the day before we launched. And that was the best phone call. I still can't believe it happened. And I, it was just a fantastic moment in my life. Now I just need to meet them. So I have their coin, come and get it. The second day we were on orbit, Mission Control says, oh, we go over our schedule for the next day. And they say, okay, first thing in the morning, you're gonna have a show and tell. And Cyan, I hope you've painted something. And I was like, oh crap, I haven't done anything. <laughs> and, and so I got out these markers and um, some of you might have seen this, but I drew my dragon. Now, the dragon is the one symbol that I have drawn my entire life. It takes hours to draw and paint a complete thing. And so I knew that I wouldn't be able to be up in the cupola for that amount of time. And so, um, and, and, and in it, you know, one orbit, you know, you get a, a sunrise and a sunset because you orbit um, every 90 minutes. And so you just don't have the light and you just don't have the, it's just an unrealistic spot. So I thought, okay, if I'm not gonna paint up there, where can I paint that is independent? So that view helped to like inspire me with I think colors and thoughts, but I had an idea before going up of what I wanted to paint. And that was really, I'm making sure I didn't put anything else in my bag, but this bag is, um, and so I wanted to do this Afogaya scene, which is right here. Oh my God, this is my painting. <laughs> this painting is, Oh, and this clipboard. This is the clipboard that I had it on. And then here's my painting. And she looks just as beautiful now. She shimmers. And so just, um, I wanted, I, because there was so many blues coming from, that I saw from Orbit, that I wanted her hair to be this kind of like blue. And then just really cool mountains. And just, I knew I wanted to have the SpaceX Dragon in there and the sunrise and really just try to create a vibrant, happy kind of scene. Um, I can't believe I was able to hand draw this and paint it all um, within a few hours while on orbit. I love it. Oh my goodness, the day we splashed down, this big weight that had been sitting here for 51 years went and, and it was almost like I felt like, you know, a phoenix rising. People were like, man, you danced off of that, um, that capsule. And I was like, heck yeah, because I, I did it. You know, no one's gonna be able to take this away from me. You, you worry um, that you're gonna mess it up or that, you know, they're going to, if you suffer from imposter syndrome, that they're somehow they're, they're gonna take it away from you, um, that you're not gonna be good enough. Even though you are and you've got the skills and you've got the talent, you just are filled with worry all the time. And I think about, you know, Michelle Obama and becoming, and, and I felt like this was my becoming. Um, everything from my childhood, um, being born on Guam, all the way up to this moment, it all clicked into place for me to be able to do this, uh, do it well, and to splash down and be like, the phoenix has risen. I want to thank all the students who submitted artwork for the Art and Poetry Contest through South Mountain Community College. Here is your work in space with me, floating around. Thanks. Thank you, Explorers Club. Thanks, Explorers Club. Thanks, Thanks Richard. <laughs> Hey everyone, I just wanted to show you this unique piece of art that I'm donating to St. Jude for auction. I created it for Richard Garriott when he was going down to the Mar Marianas Trench. My scene, my Afrogaia scene with our spacecraft, our dragon in space. And now I've got my watercolors out and I'm going to see if I can use these pens. They're preloaded with water and see what kind of paint. What happens when I do this? This is so exciting. 
Hi everyone. I just wanted to give a little tribute to my parents who have passed away. My dad, mom, uh, Edward Langley Proctor Jr. and um, Gloria Proctor. They were amazing parents and my dad did some amazing work when he was working for NASA at the Guam Tracking Station. He got Neil Armstrong's autograph thanking him along with a medallion going from the Apollo 11 mission. And I feel so fortunate that I can be able to fly them in space with me. <laughs> so this is a shout out to my wonderful parents. Thank you for all that you did that enabled me to get to where I am today in my, in my life. So. Face of God. We're gonna go high.